So new FPS patch notes came out. We're not going to go over the whole thing. I'm not big on reading patch notes. That's not my, you know, it's not my shtick. But I do want to go over some things in the patch notes that relate to FPS that personally interest me. And I want to give you my opinion on them. So let's begin. Optics now increase aim down sight time. So what this means is that when you put on any optic, whether it's a red dot or higher, it's going to cause it to be slower for you to, to bring your weapon up and shoulder it, to look down the sights. This is a fantastic change. Not many games, to my knowledge, do this. And most games treat iron sights as a disposable, non-usable part of the weapon until you unlock optics. So now you have a choice. You, you can use iron sights, which have all been improved, by the way, and it gives you a bon you know a benefit and a bonus to using them. You still get a, clear, a visual clarity bonus for using red dots, right? But now the iron sights are, they're just not obsolete. They could be used. I love this. This is fantastic. Scopes that are 8x and above will have a glint visible to players when a scope is targeting them. Everybody knows about scope glint now. Uh, scope glint is necessary for a game like this. It's necessary for any game. Um, I don't care whether you disagree or agree. The point is that you have to give players an option or a counterplay or something, some type of notification that they're going to be one-shotted. When it comes to a bomber or an aircraft or a plane or a tank, you you know it, you see it, you hear it, you know it's coming. Snipers, it's not like that in games. You can say, oh, well, that's just how it should be. No, that's not how it should be. It's a freaking game. It's a freaking game, and it needs to be fun. If you want to one-shot people, go, go play any other variety of bad FPS games out there. Personally, I think the glint should be visible from orbit. Force reactions have been adjusted, so FPS weapons will not cause staggers on any weapons. Uh, so basically, force reactions have been removed. This is great. This is what we needed. Force reactions have been some of the dumbest, most frustrating things I've ever experienced in a shooter game before. And I had to deal with aim punch from Planet Side 2. So having this removed is is such a massive change. I, I can't believe it. I, I, I really can't. So yeah, this is good. No more getting knocked down because somebody shot you with a gun. Thank you. When moving diagonally, players will now use strafe movement values. So what this basically means is they've removed tricording for FPS combat. So when you would go forward and to the right or forward and to the left, you would move horizontally or diagonally rather at full speed it was very stupid cause warping was dumb it was very silly looked bad i'm glad it's gone not many people even knew you could do this but you could strafe that and you could really become hard to hit especially if you're wearing light armor so good glad it's gone equipment no longer block bullets such as backpacks weapons so yeah th this means that any type of equipment on your body before acted like era whether it was magazines frag grenades you name it, if it was on your character, it was invulnerable and blocked bullets. That's probably what caused the TTK to feel really bad for a lot of people. This being fixed will make everything feel a lot better. Bullets will no longer damage multiple body parts of a singular player. So before, again, and this explains what it means, but is if you shot somebody in the arm and it went through the arm, hit the chest, you did double damage. So it made, it somebody just made people just die. You didn't even know what happened. Again, it was that inconsistent damage. This being fixed along with the equipment no longer blocking bullets, these two things here are going to make the combat feel so much better. Very good. Spread has been fully removed from all ADS. This is how it should have always been. Certain weapons still had spread when ADS, which made them feel bad. But now you have a real reason to go ahead and pull up your weapon and aim down the sights. I like that. I like that there's no more spread. I think this is a great change. Um, more games, more FPSs should be like this, so I'm glad that they're actually doing this in Star Citizen. Underbarrel laser pointers now decrease spread by 12.5%. So, this means if you do want to do your hip fire or your point fire, whatever you want to call it, ADSing, if you put a laser on your weapon and you activate it, you can now do that. So it lets you save some time and get some accuracy out there at really close range combat that you otherwise were not getting. Pretty much a standard for most FPS games now. I'm glad it's finally an SC. Now let's go over the weapons. S38, this is the standard pistol, I think, which in my opinion anyway, this is the one that all should be balanced around. It's the bearing pistol. Very versatile. I think versatility is how I would describe this. Damage increased by 50%. Mag size increased from 15 to 20. New procedural recoil, new iron sight. 
By increasing the damage, increasing the magazine size, this weapon is now obviously even better than it was before, and it was already pretty good. You're going to see a lot of mag size increases, and mag size increases had to happen along with TTK increases. This is overall very good for the game. There is this idea that we had to, the game I should say, had to abide by modern firearm standards where magazines are only, you know, mirroring real life components or other games. That's total nonsense. Um, if the TTK goes up, the mag capacity has to also go up to account for it. And I'm glad they're finally doing that. So, I got a little bit off on a tangent there. You're going to see this quite a lot in the video. But yeah, this is a good pistol, all around solid. Very happy to see it get buffed. LH-86, this is the Gemini fully automatic pistol. Uh, one of my favorites, actually. I enjoy using this one. It's just you hold down the trigger. It's like having a submachine gun, but in your hand. In your, in your one hand. Very deep. Damage increased by 24%. Recoil adjusted to be more consistent. Yeah, I mean, what more can be said, right? It's got more damage, it's more reliable in terms of uh, accuracy and control. That was mainly the big problem with it before, was that the weapon was unable to really be aimed. Uh, the damage increase is to allow it probably to get more than one kill per magazine, which is also good. And when you start seeing the damage increases like that, or the magazine size increases throughout the rest of this video, think about it from that point of view that... We're trying to get more than one kill per magazine out of these weapons. And that's that's what these are all for. So don't don't just look at it from like, oh man, it's doing more damage. Whoa. Like think about why it's doing more damage. Salvo frag pistol. This is your shotgun pistol. I never liked this thing. Um, it was annoying to use. It was even more annoying to be shot by because it had force reactions. But that's been changed now. So let's see what they did to it. Damage increased by 6%. Additional pellets and spread increase now interpolates as opposed to needing to be fully charged for additional benefits. Min distance for damage drop from 25 to 30 meters. Min damage increased from 2 near damage cap. Min multiplier of charge mode decreased by 41%. Damage multiplier of charge mode decreased by 12.5%. Removed cooldown for firing after a charged shot. No longer causes knockdown and staggers. This thing was okay before. Now it's it's going to be a lot better. And the biggest reason why it's going to be better isn't just because they removed the force reactions for everybody that's you know on a receiving end, but not the user, but it's because they removed the cooldown for firing after a charged shot. That was that is usually the most annoying part of any weapon in this game that has a charge mechanic, is the cooldown between when you can use it again because it, it takes away your control as a player and it's absolutely infuriating. That's why I don't use it. So if they get rid of that cooldown or remove it drastically, I'm happy. Arc light. this is the laser pistol. As you can see, no real changes to it. It's, it was good before, it's good now, it's still fine. Just a good solid pistol. Coda, this is your revolver, this is your hand cannon, this is your alpha damage pistol, right? I like it, it had some issues, but overall it's pretty good. Damage increased by 25%. Min damage increased by 75%. Now three shots mediums and four shots heavies to the chest. All in all, very good. For a weapon that has a relatively limited cylinder, it has to have alpha damage to make up for that. So in general, when a weapon has less bullets, it needs to do more damage. It's a very general balance rule. So this thing can now reliably get some kills, you know, more than one, uh, potentially two or three, or maybe more, maybe, maybe one more after that, depending, per cylinder. So this is gonna be a very skill-based weapon to use. Um, it's very nice. If you can land your shots, you're going to really like this one. Uberev. This is the electric pistol. I never liked this thing. I very rarely used it. It was terrible. And seeing as how they increased the damage by 90%, so almost 100%, you can tell it was pretty bad. Do not have an opinion on this. I never liked it before. Didn't use it before. So we got to wait and see. Moving on to rifles. P4AR. Much like the S38 pistol, this is the standard in which all rifles should be balanced around, in my opinion. This was a, I believe it was meant to be a very versatile weapon. Um, it suffered a bit with the TTK changes. I feel now that with the bug fixes and weapons no longer, you know, equipment no longer blocking bullets and other various changes, the thing is going to be quite good and where it needs to be. So, ammo count increased from 30 to 40. Damage increased by 11%. Recoil adjusted to be more consistent. Aim down sight speed increased from 0 0.33 to 0 0.25. Removed all spread from ADS. Iron sight improved. This is what it needed. And much like I said before about magazine capacity increase, this thing was being held back by this weird design idea. 
that because real life assault rifles have 30 rounds in it. Star Citizen assault rifles 900 plus years in the future also have to have 30 rounds in it. It is such a good thing that CIG is getting away from that viewpoint. It's very, very silly. And now we're seeing, you know, them making these adjustments that need to be made to make this game, its shooter components, into a real shooter game. And the P4AR, this changes, I think, is, a, is more, it's indicative of that new thinking or that new mentality. So I'm very happy to see this. This is going to be a very good weapon now. S71, this is the Gemini, I guess it's meant to be a battle rifle. Uh, very strange for Gemini because usually they're a high rate of fire, low damage-ish, kind of like. So having a battle rifle in there is quite weird. I always liked this weapon. Um, it was one of my favorites. It's very versatile, and it's probably going to be my go-to for the PU with a couple, well, the changes which I'm going to talk about here in a second. But yeah, this solid battle rifle headshot machine. Loved it. Min damage increased by 75%. Projectile speed increased by 100%. Recoil adjustments. Aim down sight time decreased from 0.375 to 0.275. Iron Sight improved, now defaultly uses Iron Sight. All right, so last one, what that means is when you find it, the PU, it typically had like a 4X on it. That's all that really means. Yeah, what could be said, this is going to be a attack driver. High velocity, it's got good damage, just wow. Minimum damage increase as well. You're going to really be a, you know, medium range killing machine with some versatility for indoor combat due to being semi-automatic. I can see this thing being very good. Gallant, this is the burst laser rifle. I never really liked it um burst weapons in games are usually in general they're bad uh the only one i've ever played where burst weapons were good was call of duty with like the m16 and battlefield bad company 2 and bf3 with the an94 those were very good because the weapons were high velocity and the refire rate was incredibly low, almost non-existent. So even though it was a burst weapon, it, it could be bursted very quickly and it made up for it. So unless they do something like that, I can't personally see myself using this, but again, I haven't played it obviously, so I can't really tell you yet until I try it. So see what they did to it. Recoil adjusted to be more consistent. All right, there we go. Damage increased by 27%. Iron Sight improved, projectile speed increased by 100%. Well, if we've got more damage and we have more velocity, and let's see, the recoil is more consistent, maybe it means it's going to be going close to the same point of impact. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, these are pretty positive overall. Um, I'm going to hold judgment on it. I'm skeptical, but we'll see. Rifle. This was my go-to before they increased the TTK. It was borderline overpowered before. Um, it was more like if you've played other shooter games, think of like the Scar H from Battlefield, you know, back, or, you know, Battlefield 4. Uh, just a lower magazine capacity, higher damage per shot, lower rate of fire weapon. Those are typically what I like to use. So we'll we'll see how this uh, these changes go. Recoil adjusted to be more consistent and overall recoil reduction. Damage increased by 7%. Ammo count increased from 30 to 35. Removed all spread from ADS. Alt fire damage multiplier increased by 100% iron sight improved. So minor damage increase coupled with ammo count increase. That's going to get you a few more kills per magazine. I like that. That's a very good change. The alt fire damage multiplier damage being increased. The alt fire was really bad before, so any change is going to be good. I, I suppose here it's going to let you charge up and take a take a shot at medium range. Uh, I'm not going to say until like a counter sniper roll, but it, it's going to give you a little bit more of an option to, to lay out some damage. Uh, we'll have to wait and see on that one. I'm not sold on that one. But yeah, overall, this is very good. This is where the current rifle needs to be. It was suffering before, and now it should be in a better spot. All right, so some machine guns. This is, this is going to be interesting here. So some machine guns, in my opinion, are the best weapons in a game. And it has less to do with the sub machine guns and more to do with the design of the game. Everything in the game that matters is done inside. It's either in do in, done inside of a spaceship. It's either done inside of a facility, a space station, typically close combat. And that's where submachine guns reign supreme. Until there are objectives that are outside or until combat becomes transitional where you need to go from outside to inside, I cannot see submachine guns being anything other than dominant for any type of real use. But that's just a little bit of, um, 
Yeah, this is my two cents there. All right, P8SC. This is the bearing submachine gun. Again, much like all bearing weapons, I think that this is the standard of which all should be balanced around. I like this thing as it is. I've always liked it. I felt it was good. And as you can see, it has very few changes. Recall adjusted to be more consistent. Iron sight improved. There you go. Just an all-around solid submachine gun. Did not need much love. C-54. This is the Gemini high rate of fire submachine gun. This is usually my go-to. If you've seen any of my B-roll footage or anything where I'm killing people in Star Marine, you will see that this is the weapon I prefer to use. It is a close combat powerhouse. The TTK is excellent. The recoil to me was very manageable. I never had a hard time controlling it. It felt very smooth. So yeah, I'm going to be perplexed about these changes. Recoil adjusted to be more consistent. Recoil return should be more smooth. Max spread reduced 66%. Iron sight improved. Magazine size increased from 40 to 50. All right, so there you go. We've got the magazine size increase. Uh, again, same thing. We're trying to get more than one kill per magazine, and that's fine. This weapon was already very good, and now it's going to be even better. I will be surprised to see myself using any other SMG other than this one again, because this is what I currently use. But I don't want to be too, um, I don't want to jump the gun here. We don't know really what, you know, all the other changes that have happened. But statistically speaking, this was usually, in my opinion, the best one. So we'll say Lumen 5. This is the burst fire SMG. Suffers the same problem from the other burst weapon, the Gallant, and all the burst weapons. I don't know why it exists in the first place. I feel like the Gallant or the uh, Lumen 5 only exists as a burst fire laser submachine gun because we have a... We already have a fully automatic laser submachine gun. I don't know. That's just my own stupid take. I'm probably wrong on that one, but it's very strange that we've got one like there. But hey, maybe that's the, the manufacturer's... What's it called? Identity, uh, it, uh, the laser, what is it, um, Klaus and Werner? Yes, maybe it's the, the Klaus and Werner identity is burst weapons, in which case, ignore me, I'm stupid. All right, but let's let's talk about it. Damage increased from by 35%, I think it's a typo there, damage increased from by, probably two, anyway. Burst delay decreased by 11%. Recoil overhaul to pull consistently to the left. Max spread reduced by 90%. Iron Sight improved. I could maybe see myself using this with the burst delay removed and the damage increased, if that's what that means. Um, max spread being reduced by 90 might make it a close range tack driver. So you'll be landing some headshots pretty reliably with that thing. So, and with a recoil to the left pull, yeah, this doesn't look bad. This looks interesting to try. This weapon, I shouldn't be as hard on it as I was. A lot of that stems from the fact that I never liked the burst delay on these things and I, they didn't feel good. But without this burst delay and these other changes, this this might actually be pretty good. This might just be your precision submachine gun, as silly as that sounds. All right, the custodian. This was my PU go-to for a weapon. And it was my PU go-to because it had 60 shots. It was a laser weapon, which meant it had no damage drop-off. And because it had no damage drop-off, I could use this anywhere and, and not suffer. So if you did PvP out on the PU and you were like fighting in SPK or Jump Town or wherever you're fighting at, you need that that longer range punch, but you also need something to keep you going in the fight indoors. Because you could buy the weapon from Grimhax, it was very easy to get and it had a high magazine capacity. I just use it all the time. 60 rounds too, very nice. But do they change to it? Damage reduced by 11.5%. Recoil made to be more consistent. Aim down sight time increased from 0 0.156 to 0 0.2. Iron sight improved. Min spread increased drastically. Due to the custodian's higher ammo count, players are holding hip fire down in CQC as opposed to aiming, which causes the custodian to be overrepresented in the SMG area. Well, all right, let's talk about this one. I can see the damage being reduced due to the magazine capacity. That only makes sense. The last part there is, is interesting to me. Now, again, I don't have the metric, so I have to trust what CIG says, but is that because of, is that from like internal testing? Is that from PU results or is it from Star Marine results? Because I never felt the need to use a custodian Star Marine because the C-54 to me was just straight up better. It killed better, it killed faster, it killed harder. So maybe I'm this enigma and I'm bad and I don't know what I'm talking about, but I'm, I'm curious to see why this was changed. I can see this being used, though, 
with a laser sight as a mag dumper, you know, a hip fire mag dump. This one I'm not sure about. I, I don't know. I gotta wait and see on the custodian. Again, I very rarely used it, so we'll see. Oh, I should clarify, I very rarely used it in Star Marine. LMGs, these were the most OP weapons in the Star Marine and the PU for a long time prior to the TTK changes. Let's see what they've done to them. FS9, my favorite. I used to love this thing. I used to use it all the time. Uh, I only stopped using it whenever they changed the TTK and reduced the magazine capacity on it. And the submachine guns just ended up feeling better with the new recoil system, or at least a portion of it. I haven't really reliably used it very much since I started using submachine guns in Star Marine. Damage reduced by 3.3%. ADS spread has been removed from this weapon. Aim down sight time decreased from 0.44 to 0.4. Spread increased, iron sight improved, recoil adjusted to be more consistent. Nothing here really seems bad. This just seems like a very good all-around LMG. Again, bearing weapon, it's the bearing LMG. Probably the standard at which all LMGs should be balanced around. I could see myself still using this. I'd have to get a feel for it and touch it in the game to actually see. But I don't think this is, is that bad. It's all right. F-55, this thing was fun to use, but I would not say it was that amazing to use. Before they changed the TTK, I used to use it because you could kill people very quickly and kill lots of people very quickly. So that made it very, very overpowered in my opinion. And I would also end up using um, a monitor crosshair, so I didn't have to use any optics on it. I, just, I, don't, I don't think you can use optics on it. I actually haven't used it in such a long time. I think you could use, oh, you can use optics, but it would jitter all over the place. That's right. So I would just use the monitor crosshair and not worry about that. But anyway, let's see what they did to it. Damage increased by 25%. Now fires only after a windup has finished. Fires at full fire rate after the spin up. New procedural recoil. Spin up time increased from 0.4 to 0.5. Spin down time reduced from 0.95 to 0.15. Spread min and max improved drastically. Iron sights improved. So the damage went up for this weapon because these it no it now will only fire after the spin up has happened. So before you could fire while it was spinning up, so you didn't really need that extra damage. But now that it no longer works that way, you need that extra 25% damage. We'll see. This was this is kind of a meme novelty weapon. I would like it to be not a meme novelty weapon, but I I would have to see how this performs. Uh, I'm glad they reduced the spin down time. Yeah, I, I gotta wait and see. Again, it was a meme before, in my opinion. And let's, let's hope it's actually better this time. Demico. I loved the Demico back when it was a lower rate of fire weapon. And I only liked it because, again, going back to the PU, it was very precise. It did not have any damage drop off. And I treated it more like a heavy rifle than an LMG. When I changed it to have a higher rate of fire, I, I didn't hate it. It was fun. It was like a laser MG42 but I wasn't too like enamored by it, but let's see what they did. Damage increased from, from by 15%, damage increased from by 50%, okay. Recoil adjusted to be more consistent, iron sight improved. Yeah, uh, with more damage and that rate of fire, I think this is gonna be just fine. There's really not much to say. Demico was even post change, it was still good. Shotguns, these are the crappiest guns in the game or they were the crappiest guns in the game. And right off the bat here, it says shotguns now when aiming down sights have a tighter spread. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, realism be damned. It does not matter about realism. It matters about gameplay. So let's move on to the first one, which is the BR2. BR2 is, again, the bearing weapon. And you've got the, the routine by now. Bearing is a standard, which all should be balanced around. Shotgun spread reduced. Damage increased by 150%. Minimum damage increased drastically. Aim down sight time adjusted from 0.175 to 0.35. Spread has been changed to a consistent 6. Pellet count decreased from 12 to 10. Iron size improved. Big, big damage. Gotta just wait and see what it does. It's your pump action shotgun. I'm excited. I'm excited. I love me some shotguns. So let's see what it does. Don't have much to offer from that one. Part 97. This is the Gemini high rate of fire automatic shotgun and the one and only I would use. I would use this thing and I would clean up lobbies in Star Marine. I would destroy people with this weapon. It's probably gonna be my go-to shotgun. Maybe, we'll have to wait and see, but let's see what they did to it. Damage increased by 33%, all right. Aim down sight time adjusted from 0.175 to 0 
Spread min and max adjusted for smaller mins and larger maxes. Not very many changes. The damage increase is slight, uh, 33% compared to the PR2's 150. I think this, I think this might be the best one still, uh, just by virtue of being fully automatic. However, I think it did have, when it was causing knockdown and stagger, that might have been what was causing it to be so powerful before this patch. So with that being removed, it might not be as oppressive as before. So this is, again, much with all the shotguns, this is going to be a big wait and see. Ravager 212 Twin Shotgun. This is like your your double barrel, I think. I, this thing was stupid. I, I never liked it. I never even really used it, so I can't even give you a comment, but let's see what they did to it. Force Reaction Reduced. Shotgun Spread Reduced. Damage Reduced by 7%. Min Damage Increased by 380%. New Procedural Recoil. It will no longer have a barrel offset between shots, meaning you can tap as quickly as possible. This was changed because players would understand they had to wait for the barrel to reset before firing again. Yeah, not much to say. Uh, this was a big time wait and see. That last part there about the refire rate is the biggest problem I think it had. So we'll wait and see. Devastator Shotgun. This thing was the plasma shotgun, kind of like the Karna. I think the same manufacturer as well, Castec Arms. Again, never use it. All the shotguns sucked. I think it was one of the worst. Damage increased by 26%. Damage range drop off increased by 300%. Spread tightened, pellet count increased from 10 to 12. Damage multiplier is now 1.35 when fully charged. No longer causes staggers and knockdowns. Pellet count increased by 66%. Aim down sight time adjusted from 0.175 to 0.35. Again, big time wait and see. Not a big fan of charging mechanics. I hated using them. I will probably still hate using them. If it's not obnoxious or cumbersome to use, I could probably see myself trying it out. But again, wait and see. Dead Ring. This is that one you get from the, uh, I don't know, what was it? I got it from the Citizen Con thing. It's like this junk looking pump shotgun. I think it fires two shots per. It's fun to use. Again, it was bad like all shotguns. And you, you can see here, look at this changes. Damage increased 20%. Minge damage increased by 50%. It's just got more damage, right? So again, wait and see. Oh boy, snipers. CAG knows I love snipers. Let's see what they have to say. All right, snipers will no longer one shot on a body shot. So yeah, that was the part of the fix that we had there before. Uh, let's see, snipers in general now have a more drastic projectile drop. Very nice. No sniper scopes are able to auto zero anymore. Thank God. Zeroing ranges have been adjusted on sites. Okay, cool. Very nice. No, no more uh, easy, no more easy one shots for sniper kitties. B6LR, the most broken weapon in the game. Let's see how they fixed it. No longer causes staggers and knockdowns. Fire rate decreased by 45%. Damage increased by 11%. Fall off adjusted. Will one shot medium heads until 300 meters. New procedural recoil. Spread adjusted drastically. Aim down sight time increased from 0, 0 0.45 to 0 0.55. Overall, very good. Um, no, it's not going to one shot a heavy, which is nice. This weapon needed to be nerfed, and I'm glad it's been nerfed. This is your, again, bearing weapon, standard to which all sniper rifles are derived from. It's your versatile sniper rifle. It will still be versatile. AO3. This is a Gemini one. This thing sucked. Um, I never used it, but see what they did to it. New procedural recoil. Damage reduced by 15%. Aim down sight time increased from 0 0.23 to 0 0.435. So this is probably just going to be your more higher rate of fire sniper weapon that does not one shot. Scalpel sniper rifle. This one was interesting. It fired two shots instead of one. Again, since I'm a man, I didn't use sniper rifles, so I can't really tell you too much about them, but so let's just read what they did. Damage increased by 5%. Aim down sight time adjusted from 0 0.23 to 0 0.4. Projectile speed increased by 1 point or 105%. Projectile speed increased by 105%. Scalpel should now be far more consistent as both projectiles fire at the same time, meaning the recoil position now no longer affects where the second projectile lands. Min damage increased by 125%. KSAR sniper is fast, deadly, but cannot deal with targets as effectively over 150 meters compared to the P6LR. Yeah, so this is more your closer range one, huh? Makes me wonder, though, what the AO3 is going to do. So this is interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Well, there you go, sniper guys. There's your, your shorter range sniper. Azcav sniper rifle. This was the bolt action electric sniper rifle that you had to use in gun rush that was the most awful experience whenever i would get this thing i would try to not use it and just stab somebody because stabbing people was just better than using a stupid weapon but let's see what they did to it force reactions reduced damage increased by 20 percent projectile speed decreased by 50 percent 
aim down sight time adjusted from 0.23 to 0.52, damage drop minimum range increased to 350, spread increased by 50%. I guess this is probably going to be your most alpha damage. So if the P6LR is your in-between, this is going to be your most alpha. Because I think it's a bolt action. It's a, it's a laser, it's an electric bolt action rifle. Electric bolt's very cool. Very cool design though, even though snipers are lame. Very cool. Oh, let's just see what it does. Arrowhead. This is the charge up laser one that when I did use a sniper rifle in the PU, believe it or not, I actually used this over the, the P6. And I only did it because I would, with a full charge, it had no damage drop off, it had a high velocity. So it was really easy to use. And you'd be like, oh, the, the charge was shaking the scope, it was terrible. Yeah, only if you're a noob and not using reshade and have uh, you know crosshair on your screen, you ignore that. So that's what I would do. Totally cheesy, but that's the one I would use. And I would just one-shot people over at Siege of Warson sitting on a skyscraper. But anyway, let's see what they did. Charge damage now interpolates. Charge time reduced from 2 to 0 0.5. Charge time now increases projectile speed by 5x. Oh, there you go, guys. There's your, there's your fast-charged laser weapon. Laser sniper weapon. Grenade launcher. Grenade launcher, a weapon that should never exist in any FPS game. The minimum radius increased from 0 0.25 to 2. Max radius increased from 3 to 6. Damage increased from 14.2 to 16.5. Yeah, I mean, what's there to say, right? It's a grenade launcher. They're destined to either overperform or underperform. That's just the nature of grenade launchers. If only it was a non-lethal weapon. Oh, well. Real gun, the only real infantry anti-vehicle weapon in the game. Let's see what they did to it. Explosion min radius increased from 0.75 to 5 meters. Max radius increased from 2.5 to 8 meters. Damage increased from 5.5 to 10 meters, or yeah, damage, incre damage increased from 5.5 to 10. Damage to ships remains the same. Yeah, this railgun's still good, looks like. I wouldn't have mind seeing a slight velocity increase on it, um, just because I'm biased, but it totally did. Yeah, railgun seems fine, no problem, sir. Grenades, hand grenades. Minimum radius increased from 0 0.25 to 3. Max radius decreased from 7 to 4.25. Damage increased by 43%. So, this is very good. I like this. I'll tell you why I like this. Because grenades right now kind of suck. But hand grenades, unlike grenade launchers, require a certain degree of skill to actually use. And they're a, they're a consumable. They're a true consumable, right? You could bring a bunch of magazines for a grenade launcher. But these, you only bring like four because they go on a special slot in your armor. So they got to be good. By increasing the damage, it makes them more lethal and by making it so that the closer it is it sounds really stupid right but by reducing the radius but increasing the kill radius to closer it is which is how you would think it would work is a very good buff for these things because right now people just would throw them all over the place and knock people down it's very silly but yeah this is a good change i like this so far so yeah it looks like star citizen is about to be a real fps game finally our little boy's all grown up i'm actually very excited to see this i am looking forward to the changes getting my hands on it and once it's actually out and available, I would, if you guys want, I will do more in-depth reviews of the weapons and I'll use them out and give them, uh, give you guys my opinions on them. FPS videos aren't very popular in Star Citizen, but it does remain my favorite aspect of the game and one I want to be the absolute best at. So there you go. Thank you for watching.